What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Keeping It Real's Bad Movie October. Closing out the big day, Halloween. It is the most wonderful time of the year. Yeah. It is Halloween today. You might be out by the time this video releases out with your families. If you got kids or you got kid friends who got kids, you might be out with them. Or you might be out doing bar crawls and whatever else is left in your city or state. I know in where I'm from, we deal with Halloween all month long. And specifically the weekend to weekend in between, it's, it's, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. As I told y'all in the Scream 6 video, it's just like a, you would almost think it was like some type of festival that was going on here. But, like I said, it's the most type, wonderful time of the year. I'm excited. I, I don't really have a lot of plans today. I'm probably just chilling the house, honestly. Cozy up to some movies. If, if, and if that's what you're doing, if that's what you're doing, because I'm having a saw thought, actually. I'm going to watch, finish Saw 5. I started the other day for the first time. I used to be a really big Saw fan, but around 4, I remember we had it on bootleg, and I just fell asleep. I think I was tired of it. And I was one of those people who was very excited when Saw first hit scene because it was something new and fresh that we had never really seen with horror before and I think by saw four I was just kind of exhausted you know and for whatever reason I decided to go back and I guess recommit to watching <laughs> anyway I'm just some housekeeping stuff y'all bear with me I wrote a script I'm not good at reading scripts or sticking to scripts so y'all bear with me as I stumble through it or try to figure it out as I'm going along with this thing. Also, 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 talking about transition. Going forward, it will just be me as the main host out here on these Keeping It Real streets, okay? And that means from here on out, aside from any guests that I decide to bring on, it'll just be me and you. Just me and you, just me and you. But... If you're a friend of Britt and you want to continue to see her and the project she's working on, make sure you go over to Unapologetically Black it's a YouTube channel and follow them and subscribe and all of that stuff. But now for what you've been waiting for. Um, these movies are in no particular order, I promise you. I, but I'll still give my, my five-star ranking as we normally do on Keeping It Real, but there are no particular order of importance or worst to greatest to best to whatever. And so... Remember that the, the, the scale, the ranking, the stars, they're inverted this time for bad horror movies. Meaning five is the absolute worst instead of five being the best, five is the worst. Okay, let's get into it. All right, so number one, I feel like I'm gonna get stoned for this. It is The Angry Black Girl and Her Monster. All right, this movie is a science fiction horror film starring Layla Deleon Hayes, who is most known for being Doc McStuffin and or Queen Latifah's daughter on the Equalizer. But she plays a 17-year-old genius, as they say in the in the movie, Macaria, who is obsessed with curing death. Her obsession started after the death of her mother and then a couple of years later, her older brother, who they both were killed by gun violence. And she rightfully feels like it destroyed her family. Her father ends up on drugs. Um, Chris, her older brother, had a baby on the way and now the girlfriend is left to care for the baby by herself. And so she has been stealing bodies <laughs> to bring, to try to bring her family members back to life. And the closest she is to this is Chris. She took parts from various dead bodies and put them into Chris. So she made this like mashup of different body parts and aspects and an electrocution and brought him back to life. Problem is she soon realizes that her brother, Chris is not Chris. He is a monster. He is uh, super strong. He can't really speak much. He is very grotesque and ugly. Initially, he defends her, or so she thinks, but really, he's just on a quest for revenge. So he came back with a vengeance, and she realizes that she can't control him. So he out here trying to get everybody that wronged him or he feels wronged by currently in his state which people see a monster or some weird dude lurking around, they're not necessarily gonna be nice to him. For me, what they did well 
is the the concept, right? It is a modern day retelling of Frankenstein. You got Vicaria, Victor, the mother death, grief driving them to produce this monster being into science and a mad scientist, the electrical aspect of it. Because they could have brought the monster back this time with something different other than electric. But in the original story, you have this this idea of using electric to animate the monster, etc. That modern retelling, the updated story of Frankenstein is dope. Also, also, even though I'm about to criticize the fuck out of this, I also enjoyed that it was set in the hood and black people and all of that. And not, yes, black people, because I'm black, I, there's some partiality to that we all have. But more so, just the idea of setting this Frankenstein story in the hood, you know what I'm saying? In black, in, in gross, in black, black culture. But, but, okay, this movie fell victim to what I feel like oh, most black, quote unquote, Horrors do right. They're trying to be trying to have this elevated or horror thing, and I'm I'm with it, but also I'm exhausted. They over dramatize living in the hood and gang culture and stuff to the point that to me it's cringy as hell. Like I grew up in the hood, right? And when I look at when I look at TV shows and stuff, I can often tell that to me, what seems like these people who create these movies have never actually lived it. They just kind of go off of what their impression of it is. It's almost like an exaggerated form of BET or something to me that are like real life situation. And it just gets really, really cringy or like, really like, that's not it. it for somebody who grew up in this thing, it, it becomes hard to relate to these people. And then the other thing is like, no matter how many physical threats they are, right? You have this monster running around. Sometimes you have ghosts, you have actual people trying to kill you. It is that racism always has to be a boogeyman somewhere lurking in the corner. And I just, it, it, it's, it gets so heavy handed with the social justice messages or themes in it. It's like, it's, it's super exhausting. I, I just want to watch a movie sometimes. I just want to just straight up watch a movie. I don't feel like white people do this. Like every every movie that comes out isn't just dripping in their circumstance, whatever that be, right? Like, cool, we have movies, uh, I'm going to say like for 8 Mile, even though that was more realistic. That was about people living in a trailer, but I did I felt the struggle of living in a trailer home, but that wasn't the basic is that a movie? It was about making it and getting on and all of that. I didn't feel like it was bogged down by these heavy handed social justice themes about white people living in trailers. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know how else to put that. But like I said, the shit is exhausting to me. I sometimes I just want to see black people doing regular, regular shit and getting killed off regular. I don't think there's anything wrong with talking about social justice issues, the grave mistreatment of black people that we have to face and had have historically had to face and portraying how some of us live. But I don't think every single black movie and specifically black horror movies needs to be trying to make these points. And then terribly, 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 I might add. I, it's just, it's so frustrating to me. And then what they tend to do, the plot and the dialogue somehow gets hinged on these messages and themes. Again, that's the heavy handedness or whatever. And so the characters start behaving in ways that that are unnatural. And, it, and what it does is it ends up stripping the messages and the themes of the actual point. Like, it, I, I, I don't know how to harp on this anymore, but I'll go back to Swarm, right? I didn't really like this show for this reason. The, the police officer made this comment about how black girls go unnoticed. She's a serial killer, so she didn't pop up on anybody's radar because she's black. But son, like, you wrote the show for her to get away with it. You wrote it like that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if in real life that would necessarily you can't say oh we're over policed and all of this stuff on one hand and then also say we go unnoticed for being a serial killer on the other hand it does not make sense you wrote it this way you're trying to make a point that i'm sorry the intended audience will not get they just will not get because it's so heavy-handed it makes it completely unrealistic i was like fuck it but i kept watching it because i was like maybe this movie would surprise me but what I was, I walked away from it still feeling a little whelmed. And not because it didn't necessarily meet my standards in that regard. More so because I don't, I didn't feel like I spent a lot of time with the, with the actual monster. I, I, he, he was like killing people and stuff. And like, it was, it, it just didn't hit. It just didn't hit.
I don't know how to say it. They, the, the kills didn't hit. I didn't spend enough time with them. Or like, like literally on screen. Like by the time the, the when the monsters introduced, there's a lot of runtime in the movie for you to spend with them. But you don't actually get to spend that time with this monster or her actually confronting this monster. So I felt mm, meh like, about it. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. I want my movies to I want to spend time with the monster I want to see the kills that is what I'm here for as watching a horror or a psychological thriller that crosses over to the horror genre whatever I want to see that so to wrap this all up the movie is three stars it wasn't terrible it definitely had its moments but like I said it left me kind of whelmed like not over not under just <laughs> whelmed to number two Number two is The Cult of Humpty Dumpty. Now, y'all heard Bert talk about this movie, and I finally got around to watching it, and boy, <laughs> boy, it was it was bad. It was bad. It was so bad. It was bad, not like in entertaining, entertaining kind of ways that I like. It wasn't bad, like frustrating. It didn't piss me off or anything. And maybe somebody found it entertaining. Like, uh, there are people online that like this fucking movie and the first one because it is a sequel. But I did not. I just found it boring. There are certain sins that I cannot get past in this movie committed them. And so, yeah, let, let, let's get into the like synopsis of the movie. Because again, I think this is it's a good premise. It's something that we've kind of seen done at this point for the movie to come out in 2022. We've seen some version of this. Uh, a group of girls, supposedly troubled teens, but they actually like more like close to their 20s or something like that. They go to a special camp for a green, green cleanse, they call it. They're doing like some type of natural living type of thing. I'm learning to live off the land, eat naturally, live holistically, blah, 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 blah. Except the camp is a front for a cult that resurrected and is devoted to this Humpty Dumpty doll. It is a doll. I initially did not think it was a doll. I thought it was like its own it was like a creature, but it is a doll who is some version of a trickster god. The thing about it for me is like, it doesn't know to me whether it, it I guess it would be a supernatural or paranormal slasher. Because on the one hand, this daemon doll thing eats the girls alive, but then it also kills them with knives and other things. And I think I only saw him eat one kid. I, I don't know. The movie didn't really hold my attention very long. Supposedly, there is a message about dementia and like the impact of it, that it has on people's families. But you know, I'm not smart enough, to, you know, to have gotten that. Or the movie just wasn't holding my attention. I, I almost fell asleep on it. I, I was so bored. So for that, Call to Humpty Dumpty, you get five stars. Five stars. You don't get 10 like Winnie the Pooh because you weren't entertaining. You were not. You were just bad. Just bad. I can't believe there's like a following for you online, but somebody's got to like it, I guess. Moving into number three. I have a fondness for this movie at my heart, like similar to Pinocchio's Revenge, because it was one I, ch I discovered in childhood. You know, I was, there, I was discovered it as a kid. Dolly D. Dearest is a supernatural slasher that was direct to video. And I either, we either had the VHS at some point or I like found it on TV. So synopsis is about a family that moves from Cali to Mexico because the father is the owner of, he becomes the owner of the Dolly Dears factory. The factory is next to an archaeological dig and one of the archaeologists ends up accidentally releasing the spirit of Sanzia, which is supposed to be Satan or the child of Satan or Satan engrossed in a child's body. It had like a goat head and a regular body. The Mayan people eventually like killed the thing because it was like too evil and now the spirit dwells in the archaeological area. Somebody lets the spirit out. And then it flees and goes into a doll. The doll gets then attached to a little girl. The little girl starts behaving weirdly as, you know, the spirit tries to take her over and, you know, bodies start dropping and they eventually uncover the story and then destroy the Santia. All right, this is not an original at all. It is not an original storyline. It is something we've seen time and time again. I don't know how much we saw it by 1991, but we had already had things like the Paltrow guys that dealt with this like supernatural entity and possessed doll thing is this is the main point here. It's bad mostly because of the acting. And um, while like the movement, speech, and the sounds of the spirit and the doll, I think were very common in 1991 and before like that time period, they just didn't age well. 
it, the CGI shit for that time period. It is not like, you know, having these old animatronics and stuff that just look terrible now. Back then, it would have looked right for the part, but the CGI is just terrible. It looks like somebody like scribbled on screen sometimes. It, the story's not particularly scary either, but it did, It I will say it walked so Annabelle could run. And Annabelle is not a good movie. It almost made the list as well, but I could not force myself to rewatch it. And I'm talking about the first Annabelle. I wouldn't even go see the second and third ones because Annabelle, the first one was so terrible. The same thing with The Nun. They have just ruined the Conjuring universe altogether. A bunch of those movies almost made it. For Dolly Dearest, I give it a three. It is probably worse. <laughs> worse? Especially with the demon making the little noises that it makes. Like those little critter, bad, demonic spirit noises, like tropey kind of thing they have going on. It's fun to see. It is. But it's not that great. Coming in at number four and last on the list is a movie called Murder Party. Some of the Humpty Dumpty is just bad. It's just bad. I think it's because it's considered a horror comedy and I typically don't enjoy horror comedies. When they are together, I tend to not find them either scary nor funny. I actually just end up wondering what what are they trying to do? Like, I, I just don't get it. So I could be judging this movie harshly based on the fact that that's just not my thing. It shows in the way that they act, move, speak, etc. It's also very extremely low budget. I have nothing against low budget movies. Again, I watch them all the time. It is just bad in a way that I don't like. It commits the sins like Humpty Dumpty, bad CGI, bad effects, bad costumes, bad acting, bad, 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 bad. But this is what it's about. The main character, Chris, he finds an invitation to a Halloween party uh, somewhere on the street. He decides he's going to go to this Halloween party. He makes a terrible, terrible, terrible night costume out of cardboard boxes. I didn't even know what it was at first. He goes to the party and he quickly finds out it's a trap set by some crazy art student. Typical art student craziness, art people craziness, anything for the arts and the peace and for funding. So naturally they want to murder someone as a, as a way to make a piece to impress some dude named Alexander who is their rich and powerful sort of and sinister granter. He, he patrons them, their work all the time. And they think that he's dark and they have to do something really crazy and over the top to impress him. So in order to get, keep getting money and keep getting funding, all hell breaks loose and they end up killing not only themselves and each other in the process of trying to kill Chris. Chris actually walks away scot-free, spoiler alert. Bad kills too, I think that's another thing. I just thought about it, like how it ends, how, how he gets away. He kills somebody with a hard loaf of bread. Yeah, I just, I guess it's supposed to be ironic, funny. I just, I don't get it. I don't. It, it wasn't even done. The kill with the loaf of bread to me wasn't even done in a funny way. It's done in a way where you could mock it and it's funny, but on screen it's not. It's not good. It's just not good. It's not good. I don't have any more to say about it. This is, yeah. I think the concept was great. That is a good thing. Did I say that? The concept was decent enough. I think that I've never, I don't think that I've seen anything like that. I've seen this thing where obviously you have the sort of same thing with Call to Hunt and Dumpty where you go one place and then you find out that just like these cultish people and they're crazy and all of that type of stuff. But it being art, contextualized in art and stuff, I don't think I've seen anything like that. I, nothing comes off the top of my head, at least I'm pretty sure I have. But anyways, this movie gets five stars. It is just bad. It is just bad. It is just bad. <laughs> You, if you can find it, you might like it. I don't know if horror comedy is your thing. Let me know in the comments and tell me why. Tell me what is the appeal of this thing. Convert me to horror comedy, okay? Because maybe it's something that I'm just missing. But anyway, those are the four bad movies I highly recommend you go watch so we can agonize about them together. I will continue to do horror movies throughout the holiday season. I'm currently looking for some good thanksgiving horror movies so if you have anything drop them down in the comments as well but christmas is going to be popping for horror movies i might just do a rom-com because i'm also a sweetheart like that a soft boy like that but mostly i think we're going to be dealing with the horror genre throughout the holiday season because it is still dark it is still drab and it is the best time for horror movies all together all right so make sure you like share subscribe and again let me know in the comments what bad horror movies you like if you like horror comedy share that 
you know, and if you have any suggestions, also drop it down in the comments. All right, peace.